Live from the heart of New York City, it's the morning show with Mike and Juliet. Tuesday. Is it better to have more or less credit cards? Should you pay them off right away or over time? Today, the five factors that determine your credit score and what you can do to get your number higher. And now, your hosts, Mike Jarek and Juliet Hardy. Welcome back to the morning show. It's a simple, simple little three-digit number that can make or break your financial future. Oh, yeah. It's called... (laughs) Your credit score, and here to tell us everything we can know about it, is financial expert Sanjika Callaway Boys. Hello, dear. Hello. So there are five categories that make up your credit score, and they're kind of broken down into each one represents a certain percentage of yes. importance, I guess you could say. Let's start with your payment history. Your payment history represents 35% of your credit score, and that's really how you pay. How you pay is important because if you're not paying on time, then it's going to show other potential creditors that you don't, you don't have the ability to pay effectively. So what if you pay like 12 days late? Well, if you pay 12 days late, then you're late. Now, a lot of times credit card, uh, credit bureaus won't get a report until 30 days later. A lot of credit card companies give you a leniency, so they'll charge you a fee for paying 12 days late because you're technically late, but they will not, they 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 won't won't report it to the credit bureau. You've got to be careful because some of these places, if you're one second past the time it was due, boom. Well, actually now a lot of credit card companies are not only going to the payment day, but Mm -hmm. also a payment time, meaning your bill has to be in on the 15th by 2 p.m in order for it to consider on time. How much do they look at your current debt? Your current debt level rules about 30% of your score. And so it's really about how much income versus how much debt do I have. Your gotcha. debt to income ratio goes into a calculation. So they see, can this person afford to carry any more weight or debt before we extend them additional credit? Yeah, but it seems like lately they have been extending credit all over the place to people who can't afford to have that extra credit. Well, they have been, and that's that's really the challenge of what we're dealing with right now, which is why a lot of these creative things have happened in terms of universal default. So if you're not paying with one bill, mm. it's going to actually affect the way you pay with another. Okay, so payment history is big, 35%. Current debt level, 30%. Now, de- now we're going down to about 15% of your credit score is how long you have had credit. How lo- your s- It's called seasoned account. or age. A seasoned account or an aged account. So say if you had a card that you opened 10 years ago, and you haven't a card that you opened four years ago, your account is 10 years old. So it's based on the first account, credit account that you had and how old that credit account is. Well, so you're, so a lot of times when, when younger people are establishing credit for the first time and their scores are low, yeah. it's really because they don't have a true history. Think about it like if you're in school. It's like the way that you deal with, uh, the way that you show that you have the ability to pay is based on a history. So each year that you build a history, I begin to see your natural tendencies and I can make a determination based on your tendencies. Do they Keep track of how many times you apply for credit. Yes. How you apply for credit is also important because, say if you were shopping for a credit card or shopping for a car loan, right, and you decide, I want to get the best deal possible, Mm -hmm. it's best to do it in a compressed period of time, about 20 to 25 days, do your shopping within that period, because you're going to get a lot of inquiries on your credit report, which actually does matter. See, I think a lot of people don't know about that. They don't know. Oh, well, this guy's offered me, hey, I'll fill that one out. Wow, let's get the Ann Taylor card. Let's get the Bloomingdale's card. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Can you get it? Too goes many, into, but could you get too many credit cards? Is that a red flag? It is a red flag because, again, they're going to look at your debt-to-income ratio, and it's going to look skewed if you're going out and getting all of this credit, even if you're not using it, based on the amount that you actually And have. the type of your credit, you, you, you need to have a credit mix. Your credit mix is important because what happens is secured Secured loans, such as mortgages and car loans, require collateral. Your house or your car is the collateral. A unsecured loan, which is a credit card, doesn't require okay. a lot of information. So if something happens, they can't take anything. So to that's how they establish a credit report. Let's see if we can boost your credit score when we come right back. In two minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, we have good tips. Hold on. expert Sanika Callaway Boys back with us watching Mike do the Cabbage Patch and Running Man out there for uh, our studio audience. Fine. We're talking about credit score and how to boost your credit score. You say focus focus first on the two biggest contributors. The two biggest factors are your payment history and also how much debt you have. So you're not necessarily, there's nothing, no magic pill, nothing really sexy about it. It's just paying your bill on time. And some people simply think that my bill is always going to be due on the 15th, but you need to look at your statement because 
every month your bill due date could be different and you could have a due time which could affect your credit score. So automatic payment is going to be a really great option for you. Put it on auto pay. If you don't feel comfortable having the money taken out and automatically, then at least set your PDA or some sort of electronic calendar that's going to remind you, pay the bill in three days before it's due. Okay, but see, I know a lot, I know people who have said, okay, I'm going to put things on automatic pay, mm -hmm. but then they drain their account and they forget that they're supposed to pay. Yes, so that's, what, that's the other thing. <laughs> so that's why I say set some sort of electronic timer to remind you and do it at least three days before because there could be a transaction time period, and if you're paying by snail mail, at least seven days before to that's make sure it gets step. there on time. Automatic pay. Save me. Hi. Hi. What's your question? <laughs> I have a question about transferring balances. I get offers to transfer at 0% interest. Does that impact my credit score? It does impact your credit score for two reasons. One, because it, it skews your debt to balance ratio. So in a scenario where you have $10,000 available and you decide to take all of your money from one card and put it on another card and you decide to do that and you only have $1,000 left, now you have 90% of your outstanding balance that's in play. So that's going to skew your, sc your score. However, if you are committing to paying it on time, you're actually saving on interest. So you have to make the personal decision which is more important at this point and often it makes more sense to pay off your card with a zero balance because you're not paying all that interest back. I was so thrilled I got rid of my, the one, that's one of my credit cards the other day. I closed out the account. That's that a bad move, though? Mike. Was that bad? So, no, actually, it's, again, it's based on the age of the account. So I say close it mentally, not physically. Close off your physical, your, your access to it. So it's like, I don't even own this account anymore, but physically keep it open because that hey, doesn't don't you have to pay little, account. Keep don't getting charges. Yeah, yeah. You keep in some cases you might get you might get charges, but again, if you have an account that's been open for a long period of time, it's going to skew your age of oh. your account. So you want to make sure that you have a seasoned account. So if you've had that account for ten years and you have another account oh. that you've only had for four, if you close that account for ten years, your credit score is only good forty. Tip. Oh, good tip. That's a really good tip. Yeah. So we don't need to just close off our accounts. I don't need to say, okay, I'm closing the Ann Taylor, closing the Bloomingdale's. I'm going to make myself look really good to creditors. We should keep those accounts open, just maybe throw them in a, a glass of water and freeze it. Okay, no, here's the, here's the other, here's the skew. Now, that, <laughs> no, goes, that goes back to the credit mix because those store cards, yeah. first of all, you don't need them. And secondly, if you get them, closing those store cards is not going to is affect your score as much as closing the traditional cards, the MasterCard. But they offer me 50% off when well, I open my Well, it's not really card. on sale when it's a 22.9% You got that rate. right. I was testing you. <laughs> Sanika, thank you so much. Thank Great you. tips. And if you want to go to our website for some more tips and the review of these tips, go to mnjshow.com. Coming up, the truth about green M&Ms here. <laughs>